It told the bankruptcy court where it has been since filing Chapter 11 earlier this year that it would begin a total liquidation of its operations, shutting all its stores and sailing off into the sunset. The timetable for the going out of business process is still to be determined but in a bizarre and somewhat ironic twist that defines the current crisis the retailing business is trying to deal with, the company will begin to reopen its stores, so it can close them. When it filed for bankruptcy in January Pier 1 said it would close about half its stores, 450 or so, but try to keep the rest operational, hoping to find a buyer or some sort of plan to stay in business. But then came the coronavirus and all plans went out the window. All 900 plus stores were closed and the liquidation sales that me. It was a cruel development but Pier 1's statement that the pandemic was the cause of its meltdown rings hollow. Ultimately, due to the combination of a challenging retail environment and the new reality and uncertainty of a post-COVID world, the company and its advisors determined that an orderly wind down is the best way to maximize the value of Pier 1's assets, the company said in a press release. Even blaming it on the retail environment is more than a bit of an excuse. Pier 1's problems that got them to this point are largely self-made and the company's executives and board must bear the ultimate responsibility. In no particular order, here are the key reasons there will no longer be a Pier 1. The revolving door of executives who have run Pier 1 over the past decade has been excessive, even by troubled retailer standards. Every time a new chief honcho came along. He gave all the reasons why the guy before him failed and laid out his plan for making things right. Usually, in 18 to 24 months that guy was gone to and the decline continued. Pier 1 was pulled in so many different directions it's a wonder it lasted this long.